Hey there, and welcome to Ryan Make. Sound is a powerful tool for expression, for enjoyment, and for work. I mean, in fact, you couldn't even hear what I was saying if it wasn't for sound. But there are so many different facets of sound. It can do so many different things. And right now, what you're looking at here is not just a piece of corrugated ducting. It is actually a Rubens tube. And what a Rubens tube is good for is for illustrating this principle called cymatics, which cymatics are a physical manifestation or representation of sound's influence on the world, particularly resonant frequencies of sound. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first demonstrate how we made this flexible Rubens tube and what it looks like when it's in operation, because it is impressive. If you're interested in making one yourself, the link for my Instructables page that gives you a step-by-step -step guide is in the description below. So for our flexible Rubens tube, we need a couple of different things. We have our flexible ducting, we have our end cap with our gas source in it. If you want a guide on how to put this together, go to my Instructables page, the link is in the description below. We used a universal kind of compressed air adapter so we could use the same regulator setup from our fire snake demonstration. We put this on here on this four inch end cap, capped it off, and we'll put this together in a moment. But first, we've got to do a little bit more soldering on our modified Bluetooth speaker to acoustic exciter before we can move forward. So let's get this soldered up. So I'm gonna take some time to do a quick walkthrough of how we made the acoustic exciter end of our flexible Rubens tube. Uh, we're gonna start with this four inch aluminum duct coupler and interestingly enough, a party balloon. So what we're going to do first is we're going to trim off the end of the party balloon so that way we can have a slightly larger opening to work with. So we're trying to make this as quick and clean of a cut as possible. Okay, so we've got that. Now the next step is to bend this membrane over our duct coupler. So we're just going to try to stretch it out and not tear it. And now be careful because the duct coupler edges are sharp. Okay, there we go. We've got a flexible membrane on which to now put our acoustic exciter. So we went and we took a Bluetooth speaker, a small one, we took it apart to get the guts so we can have a simple way of doing a audio connection and then applied this small acoustic exciter, which we would then put into the center of this membrane. So I already took off the adhesive cover. So now we just have this acoustic exciter and it will stick onto that membrane. Now I know sometimes people use the term tin can to describe a really, really bad sounding speaker. But in this case, it's actually quite accurate. I mean, this is, actually not really made of tin, but it's all metal and uh, it does have a uh, very tinny can reverberation to it. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a quick demo of our finalized acoustic exciter end cap after I get to pass the uh, commercial on this uh, free app. So we're going to play a 432 and if our frequency or our, I guess our volume is low enough, we get a relatively consistent and pure tone. So now that we have both of our end caps done, it's time to work on the tube itself. So this, if you can believe it, is actually an eight foot long tube compressed to about two feet. Okay, and we're learning something really important here that <clears throat> the way that this is constructed is this is a series of spirals. And so it's actually important for us to extend in some ways to our desired length to actually make sure that our holes are lined up with each other because otherwise, as you pull this out, the body itself rotates ever so slightly. Now how a Rubens tube works is this tube will fill with propane. And on the surface of this tube, there are a series of small holes drilled and spaced apart. 
So in any other case, if you were to look at like a barbecue grill, if you were to now light these holes where the propane is flowing through, you'd have even flames all the way across. But if you excite an acoustic energy wave through the tube that matches the structure of the tube in its wavelength, in this case, quarter wavelength with half wavelength steps, you can get something that's incredible. And that's what cymatics are. What it does is it modulates the flame high, low, high, low, high. Because within this tube, there's a standing wave where this is a, an anti-node and this is a node and it oscillates where you would have points of rarefaction and points of compression. And at the point of compression, more gas will be pushed out and the flame will be higher. At the point of rarefaction, there'll be less pressure and there'll be a smaller flame. Now, here I am talking about all this stuff, but, and you're probably getting fired up, so let's get this thing lit. Okay, so we are to a moment of truth. Our Rubens tube is fully constructed. We have our end cap with our propane connected. We are clamped on, and we have our end cap with our acoustic exciter clamped on, and we have all of our holes drilled along the length of our tube. So let's connect up and see what we can do. Okay, I think we've got enough. Let's see how it does. Okay, so, oh. So that's what happens if you don't seal the end of your tube very well. <laughs> so, in our initial testing, I learned a few things. Uh, again, aluminum flexible ducting is very fragile. And then also, duct clamps aren't airtight. So, we had to make a few changes. There's, but thankfully there's this interesting stuff. It's called duct tape. I don't really know what it's for, but I think it'll work out really well for our Rubens tube. So let's see if we can be saved by this duct tape with our uh, duct, duct, ink, duct tape. Oh, -ha -ha! all right. Wow, enough playing stupid. Let's get to it. We are all taped up. We've got our five foot, 10 inch tube. Let's see if we can get this thing to sing. Nope. Well, that's another round. I guess we need a little bit more duct tape. I'm gonna step back. We're gonna see how well this thing lights. Look at that. Don't, don't do that. Well, looks like we need even more. I fixed what's hopefully our last leak, at least last unintended leak. And let's see if we can get this thing to get some decent standing waves. There we go. We get a high, low. Look at that. It's well modulated. Wow. Seems. So now we're going to test this as a flexible Rubens tube, one with a bend in it, quite a aggressive curve, making a full U. Okay, we are still getting some modulation along the curved path. This is pretty exciting. As you can see, there's variation in the flame height at various points in the tube. It's definitely much less pronounced with the curves in the tube, but it's still present. 
You can he see the flame change as the frequency of the tone changes. There we go, there's another one. So you may have noticed there have been multiple times where different parts of this Rubens tube have caught fire that I don't want to catch fire, whether it's here or here or anywhere along this whole configuration, just many times catching fire. Um, and also just the way that the sound traveled through this. So there are clearly some shortcomings to how this is configured. Uh, there's a limit to how well sealed it is. And so looking into future projects, figuring out how to seal these ends with something a little bit better than duct tape. Or looking at how the sound was conducted through this and noticing that there were at various frequencies different vibrations and rattlings that caused deformation in the flame and structure of the sound through the tube. I feel like this is quite likely due to the fact that this is a very lightweight tube and trying to conduct a lot of acoustic energy into this space was causing vibrations in the tube itself, as well as the very sectional and flexible nature caused distortions due to the acoustic energy in the tube leading to other vibrations that really undermine the cymatic phenomenon that we were looking for. But with every step comes learning. And that's what we do here at Ryan Make. We make things to learn from them to hopefully make better things in the future or figure out where to go. So if you like videos like this where we're lighting stuff on fire, we're building things, and we're looking at phenomenon in the physical universe, then I would say give this video a like, a thumbs up. Subscribe to Ryan Make to be the first to know about new videos that are coming online. I'd ask that you hit the bell for notifications. If you have any ideas about other videos or about this video right here, please leave your feedback in the comments. Until next time, this is Ryan Make, where we figure it out. Thanks.